It's Thursday, August 22nd, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we learn more about the Barnstable Adult Community Center, its programs and services, and the new name. Now for a look at municipal and legislative notes. Mercury is a metallic element that people may have in their homes. It is extremely toxic to humans and can be problematic in the environment if disposed improperly. If you have mercury-containing devices in your home, dispose of at the Universal Waste Shed at the Transfer Stations Recycle Center or at the Household Hazardous Waste Collections. If you find a jar of mercury in your shed, garage, barn, basement, or other location, give the Barnesville County Hazardous Materials Program a call. Barnesville County will respond, respond to all calls and arrange a free pickup. Call 1-800-319-319. 2783 to arrange a pickup or ask questions regarding liquid mercury. No fuss, no fees. Director of Barnesville Senior Services, Madeline Newman, joins us in studio to discuss a recent rebranding and visioning for our older Barnstable residents and the center they spend their time at. Things are thriving at the Adult Community Center. Here with me, Executive Director Madeline Noonan. It's just, it never ends over mm -hmm. there. So the Senior Center now has gone through its name change. It's uh, all the uh, collateral's been changed. Signs have been changed. Talk to us about the change of the name. Yeah, I have to say, I think it was just a pretty smooth and seamless transition now that we've had a couple of months since we um, shifted our name. Um, there hasn't been a lot of challenges. I think for the first couple of days, probably the most difficult thing for us was answering the phone and saying good morning, Barnstable Adult Community Center instead of the Barnstable Senior Center. Um, but I have to say everybody has embraced it. And I think because we talked about this for so long and it was such an involved, lengthy, deliberative process with the community and engaging um, all of our stakeholders, I think by the time it actually was officially announced, people had become so used to it anyway. So at this point, um, everybody, you know, we've moved on, we're um, excited about what the future holds. We feel like, you know, this has already benefited us in many ways um, in terms of, you know, what our overall goal, wall, goal was, which was breaking down barriers to people participating. And what people are telling us, it's a lot easier for them to come through our doors. They feel a lot more welcome um, to come into, you know, an adult community center as opposed to a senior center. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really exciting. We've gotten a lot of great um, publicity out there about this. Um, this is something that other senior centers are watching very closely. Um, every year, our state association um, of councils on aging throughout the state of Massachusetts hosts an annual conference, um, and we are actually going to be co-presenting um, with the city of Boston because they also did a big rebranding campaign this year. Um, they um, changed the name of their commission on the affairs of the elderly to the Age Strong Commission, and so that was a you know a, a big um, deal that got a lot of national recognition because obviously Boston being a big city, um, but for us to be able to alongside them talk about you know why we did what we did and you know sort of the process that we went through and um, we're going to focus on the importance of engaging the community and decision making um, with that so that's really you know I exciting for us too um, so a big part of our you know revitalization and reimagining um, you know was coming up with a new tagline that was really fitting for what we do and we put a lot of thought into that it was talking um, you know about when we look at the impact of the programs and services that we offer uh, you know w what what effect does that have on people and we look at it's helping them to continue to thrive as they age so you know oftentimes when people hear the word thrive they apply it to plant life or young children not necessarily you know people that are aging which we're all aging regardless of our age but we felt that that was something really interesting to explore and when we asked people you know around the facility and out in the community what the word thrive meant to them a lot of what we heard was you know keeping on going you know, um, you know, look, I I continuing to grow and and stay engaged, and so we got so much positive feedback from that word that we thought, well, that's one word that really sums up the totality of everything that we're doing. Whether it's somebody that's coming in learning a language or taking a, a fitness class, um, somebody who needs transportation because they can no longer drive, or a caregiver who needs. Um, you know, a safe place for their loved one, um, you know, to be and so they can continue, um, you know, to go about their, their life. Everybody's thriving as a result of that and, you know, th what we really liked about that theme was that, you know, on a, if we're thriving as individuals, our community is thriving, the facility is thriving. And so we thought, why not embrace 
thrive with us. You know, come in. It's a welcoming, inviting term. Uh, we worked also with a local graphic designer called Alison Karen, who's done a lot of phenomenal work that we were very impressed with, and we had explored a couple of different options, but we felt that she was the one who could best you know, capture um, really what we were looking for. And we had also worked with a consultant um, who's worked with a lot of um, senior centers um, called, Bar her name is Barry Atkin, um, as part of this process. And, you know, it was really fun. We had a great committee um, of people of different, um, you know, um, ethnic ethnicities, um, ages, you know, so it was kind of like looking at sort of, you know, a, a cross section of our community. Um, and we had looked at a number of different designs. And the one that we really felt embraced what we were doing was it's it's a tree basically but the tree um, is you know got the uh, it, it almost represents a person with their arms in the air like say they're obviously enjoying life and they're celebrating and we thought that that was something very positive for us because we should be celebrating aging many people don't get the opportunity to grow old and I right. think you know we look at it as something that as you you know go through your lifespan there's always potential and opportunities uh, not that there aren't challenges but that's what we're here to do is provide um, supports and services that help make um, people's quality of life continue to be good as they age. So um, every, it was universally loved. We rolled out the logo. Everybody was excited. For us, you know, I think it was the fact that we wanted to sort of honor where we were coming from because we weren't reinventing from scratch. We're really evolving. Our former logo um, had kind of green and blue colors, which we really liked, um, and we wanted to sort of grow from that. So we added yellow, which we thought, what a great pop of color. Yellow is such a bright, uplifting, you know, cheerful um, color, and, you know, it's done the trick for us. <laughs> Excellent. And, um, you know, part of this whole process, obviously, is the collateral, mm -hmm. things that surround so the sign out front has yes, been changed yes. um, some of the signage within the building has been changed yep. but also your signature magazine mm -hmm. uh, which was the compass now is changing as well yeah it was interesting you know we've had the compass for over 12 years um, it was originally called the senior compass and a couple of years ago we made a very conscious decision to let go of the word senior because as we were starting to really appeal to more um, of the you know younger older adults a lot of them were turned off as we knew um, by the word senior so we felt that if we take that out that will help us to be more appealing um, but as we went through this transition we realized we couldn't we had to change that too um, so it made sense to us to you know you know refresh the image um, and call it thrive magazine because again the word thrive is so dynamic it sort of you know talks to being active um, and engaged and you know participating in life to your fullest. Um, so it just had the right fit. So we're going to be transitioning over the next couple of months. We're actually working right now um, on a total redesign of the magazine. It's a publication that we're very proud of. As it stands right now, it's one of the best um, newsletters that we've seen for a facility like ours. Um, but we're, we're committed to making it even better and more engaging for our readers and our right. subscribers. And there's just so much going on at the communi uh, Adult Community Center. I mean, uh, from, you know, Top to bottom, there's always some activity there, but there's also a full facility building that mm -hmm. needs maintenance. Yes. So this fall is time to do some of that maintenance. This has been a, a really busy year. As you know, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary a couple right. of months ago. And, you know, as we've looked a lot of the, um, you know, like we've, we've tried to keep up over the years with the maintenance and keeping up with the facility improvements. Because again, you know, that aesthetic that people get when they come into the building is really important in terms of, you know, giving them a positive experience. We've, uh, you know, with the DPW, we did a lot of work in our ground leading up to our anniversary event and we've gotten so many compliments there but also within the building um, one of our areas that really needed to be addressed was our kitchen it was original um, you know to the construction um, and it gets a lot of wear and tear because we run um, the Meals on Wheels and nutrition program um, through Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Island so we needed to schedule some time where we could do a complete um, reconstruction um, and that's been happening throughout the summer so uh, it should be complete um, they're painting today they just put the floor down the other day but it was a huge project for us um, mm -hmm. so we're hoping in the next couple of weeks it will be done and we'll be able to get the um, you know the program um, back up and running in there um, and also one of the big things that was approved a couple of years ago that we had been seeking approval for was to have a generator installed in the building um, there were times particularly during you know um, power outages where we were 
were facing significant challenges um, with getting people um, safely out of the building, particularly our adult day program clients. It's located in the um, lower level, which we call the garden level. So when the elevator wasn't accessible, we have to bring people um, up a very winding, um, hilly path out in the back of the facility. And that created some uh, pretty tough challenges for us. So we got approval to put a generator in. And um, I'm happy to say that's like in progress right now. So <laughs> all these project sh projects should be completed, um, you know, again in the next month. And we're going to be better than ever, you know, right. inside <laughs> and out. Top to inside bottom. and out. Um, and then as we kind of like wind up summer, right, because it's always been a busy time. The grandkids are around. What's on tap for this fall? Oh, so many things. Just so many great, exciting things. Um, one of the really th the things we're most excited to offer um, on the cover of this issue, which is the August-September Compass, um, is a class that we're doing um, on rug hooking, which many people will identify this as, you know, Claire Murray has a very signature mm -hmm. look uh, and much sought after. Um, one of our friends of the Barnstable Council on Aging board members, Rosemary Bousset, actually works for Claire Murray. Um, and she had proposed um, teaching a rug hooking class because she's, you know, an expert at this. And we thought this would be an amazing you know, new type of a craft for us to offer. The great thing is Claire Murray is actually going to be popping into the classes. Oh, wow. um, so we're doing, it's been so popular that we actually have two separate classes going. Um, but they're starting um, on September 10th. We have a couple mm -hmm. of spots left. If anybody's interested, they'll need to give us a call um, at 508-862-4750. Um, so I'm actually taking this class. I'm so excited uh, to do something, you know, fun with my hands and build some new skills. Yeah. Um, and then we have on August 29th, Dick Flavin. Um, he is the voice of Fenway Park and he's the ambassador for the Boston Red Sox. He's going to come in and give a talk and he's a fascinating um, mm -hmm. person, a lot of really cool history there. That's a free talk that's on August 29th at 11. Um, and then another important um, topic and workshop that we're offering um, is with Anastasia Welsh Perino, who's the registrar of the Barnstable Family and Probate Court. Um, she's given a number of talks before. She's amazing. Right, the information she really that is. she shares, you know, and uh, it's, it's one of those topics that a lot of people really, you know, don't think about. Um, and then unfortunately when catastrophe happens you know if, if that your estate has to go through probate that is a messy messy situation um, and very time consuming so she's going to come in and talk about why you need to have a will um, and that's on September 4th at 1 30 so we encourage anybody to come in and participate in these um, talks there's so much more going on it's all in the magazine too much to mention here um, but there's lots of great things evening programs we started a new outdoor adventure program where we're going on hikes and getting to know our, our you know surroundings a little bit better yeah. which is a lot of fun and a great opportunity for you know social connection as well fantastic it just sounds like you're thriving never a dull moment we <laughs> sure are <laughs> excellent thanks, thanks so well. much Maddie. thanks thank you the 20th anniversary of the barnstable senior center brought a new name change the barnstable adult community center where residents can thrive together Congratulations, 20 years. That's amazing. I was actually here when we were at oh, the old senior center, and now it's the uh, adult community center. Um, it, it's wonderful to, to be here to share this with you. Uh, certainly, you all are such an important part of our community. Um, I'm privileged to be your town manager. Um, we work in a wonderful community with people like Madeline and uh, Lynn Poyant and the entire staff here, and all of you who participate and volunteer. Um, certainly there was no question 20 years ago when we moved forward with the project that this place would get used. Um, I think we need more at this point. Looking at this room and spending time as, uh, in my current role here, I know that we're looking to expand programming. We're looking to expand activities. We're looking to engage all of you in our community at every level and with every opportunity. So thank you so much. Enjoy. Um, I'm here to plan for the next 20 years. Hopefully you'll all be here. And um, let's figure out what's, what's next. Let's figure out what we'll be celebrating 20 years from now. Thank you. I'm Amanda Bernardo from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. 
Um, and I just am so excited to be here today to congratulate you on the 20th anniversary, the age friendly designation, the village, and the new van. I think all of, the, all of these things are just so exciting. So on behalf of the executive office, uh, we wanted to wish you a happy 20th. Um, and we are so excited um, that we're here also today to help you celebrate uh, making Barnstable a great place to grow up and grow older together. Mm -hmm. um, Massachusetts itself is also embarking on an age-friendly journey and we are standing <coughs> on the shoulders of cities and towns just like Barnstable in doing so. Um, so I just wanted to thank you and congratulate you. Um, uh, this is just uh, such an energized room full of so much energy and experience and contributions uh, that really make this community whole. And I look forward to kind of bringing this back to the state, to bringing this up to other communities uh, that sort of need some examples uh, to show them what a great place and what age friendly really looks like. Good afternoon, Antron Watson, ARP Massachusetts. Uh, I love the energy in the room today. Um, you know, as uh, Madeline said, uh, you know, it's about thriving the community. Uh, so the logo really defines what age-friendly means, um, you know, from the cradle beyond retirement. Um, you know, how, how can we make sure our communities are great for people of all ages? Uh, so with that, uh, you all are, I believe, the 58th community here in Massachusetts and uh, around 388 across the country. Um, welcome to the network of age-friendly communities. An exciting opportunity for us. It's an exciting day unveiling a new name. Obviously, the Advisable Adult Community Center will replicate programs very similar to the Highness Youth Community Center. And we found that this to be a successful way to look at it because our age group and our youth group are not one and the same. They come in all sizes, all shapes. We need to look at the programs from every aspect. The town council is very thorough when it comes to talking to Madeline and her budget. We're excited about the programs. We held uh, strongly on some ideas about uh, adult supervision and uh, uh, different uh, class points that are important to all of us in this community. And I don't think the council's ever backed down on that. Um, I've been fortunate enough to serve on the council for several years, on and off, and I was here, I believe, when we all started this program, and I have great uh, discussions about uh, finishing the basement. So that was just one of the many issues that came forward. Uh, I never miss a Christmas party because there's a craft group of knitters, and I'm sure some of them are here, that I sit with and they're very kind to me. They're there. They're very kind to me every year. So it's a great program. We're very fortunate to have it. Uh, we're certainly that type of a demographic community, and uh, we're grateful for everyone's recognition. But the council is 100% behind us here. So thank you very much. And to really see Barnstable taking the lead um, in imagining how do we really meet the needs of older adults? Uh, and how do we have connection? And, and which is very much the definition of community, right? Um, so many of us are, are, you know, throughout the lifespan, um, can be isolated, uh, cannot have that connection. And, and when a community is at its best, it's when it's facilitating that, making that happen. We rely on this facility too. Uh, we come here for, for meetings of the Hunger Network. Uh, we'll often use this space for office hours. Uh, so you're very much providing a, a space uh, and community. Uh, and so it's just wonderful to be here with all of you. I love the new logo. Uh, it's a wonderful, fabulous, gorgeous day. Um, that ukulele band was pretty cool. And then, uh, Mike Jaffer from Congress from Keating's office. Just briefly want to say one reason I always love coming to the Barnes School Adult Community Center now, uh, not just for the free hot dog or the free sunglasses, although those are cool. So I always feel like everyone's welcome here. You really are inclusive. People from all walks of life are welcome here at the center. And the new rebranding re reflects that even more uh, fully. Um, all adults are welcome here, and the whole community is welcome here. So I commend uh, everyone, all the volunteers and the board, and Maddie and her staff for uh, making sure that everyone feels welcome here. And it's uh, evidenced by how many people we have here today. So congratulations and everyone have a great summer. Thank you. So we did a lot of wordsmithing and brainstorming and we came up with the concept of thrive. 
because the work that we do here and the impact that it has is helping people thrive. Whether you take an exercise class or you need a ride to the doctor's office or you want to learn a new language, whatever it is that you need, it's helping you to thrive. And by helping individuals in our community to thrive, we as a community, as the town of Barnstable, are thriving. Neighbors Helping Neighbors, the Housing Assistance Corporation's Big Fix-a-Thon is celebrating its 10th anniversary back where it first started, right here in the town of Barnstable. This is Tony Shepley. What are you doing from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on October 5th, 2019? How about joining us for the Big Fix? The Big Fix is important to Housing Assistance Corporation because it's really the our mission in action, a demonstration of our mission in action. So it's an old-fashioned barn raising where we bring people together and come out and help our friends and neighbors and legitimately help people stay in their home and age in place. And some of these homes we go to, the people are just uh, at a point in their life where they really need the, the services and the help of their community to stay aging in place. Uh, they used to be active and used to take, you know, really great care of their home, but whatever, a, a disability, an injury, a veteran, age, right, they need, they need help from the community to be able to do that. As I say to all builders, we've been very fortunate on Cape Cod for quite a few years in that we've all been very busy and we've all been able to find good jobs and we've all been making money. So um, to that I say, hey, let's take some of that money and let's give back. There's always people out there that are less fortunate than we are. There's always people out there that need our help, and we're the people to go out and do it. And so, and there's the most part, I think we found that the building community on Cape Cod wants to do that. They want to help, uh, and they want to uh, do things that make the community better. It's definitely, uh, for me, the most exciting event of the year. And one of the reasons is because of the, all the participation we have. Um, I, I work with a group of about 40 people from Cape Cod 5, and, and that's really important and, and big for us. Um, it's also great not only to see the homeowners and, and the pride that they have in their house and how happy they are, um, but also in the beginning of the day when everyone gets together, hundreds of people this year in Barnstable, it'll be at, uh, at uh, Barnstable High School. That's, that's quite a sight to see everyone there ready to help, all excited. And so that's something that I always look forward to. I've been very fortunate in my life. I've always had a job. I've, I've always had a house. I've always been able to do stuff. And to me, it's just time to give back. And it feels good walking away knowing that you've accomplished something for somebody else. Up next, things to do, places to go, and people to meet. Did you know some household products are too toxic to trash? Disposals of pesticides and lawn chemicals, cleaners and disinfectants, arts and crafts, hobby supplies, auto and boat fluids, and pool chemicals can be brought to the hazardous waste collection at the Barnesville Transfer Station this Saturday, August 24th, from 9 to noon. You will need a free recycling sticker to participate. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, email us, or send us an old-fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.